This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, May the 15th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Isidore the Farmer, a.k.a. San Isidro Labrador. He was a Spanish farmhand in the late 11th century near Madrid. He was also really, really tall for the time, maybe 6'5", 6'6", and so he definitely stood out in the crowd. And at that time, hard work wasn't in any way looked down upon, and so Isidore was greatly honored for his holiness, his interest in and care for the poor, as well as his genuine concern for the animals he worked with. It's worth noting that Isidore wasn't a monk or a priest. He was a married man. He was married to a lady named Maria, and they had a child. And so Isidro is very much a saint of the laity and for the laity. In Madrid, where he is the patron, today marks the start of bullfighting season. Now, that can seem contradictory, given Isidro's concern for animals and that many people see bullfighting as a cruel and hateful sport nowadays. And to be fair, there are versions of bullfighting that do involve killing the bull. But there are dozens of other forms of bullfighting in which the torero dances around the bull or takes a token that's tied between the bull's horns. It's a deeply nuanced and a very old tradition. All over Spain today, little children will drive specially constructed two-wheel trolleys with a paper mache bull's head around while little children run to avoid them. It's really adorable to watch, and there's a kind of reverence for the bull in that culture. Back in 1252, about a hundred years after the death of St. Isidore, another kind of bull, this time a papal bull, was issued by Pope Innocent IV, hoping to limit the torture of heretics in the Holy Inquisition. Now, as with all really nuanced matters of history, it's intellectually easier to paint an event with a single brushstroke and move on. We see that with the Crusades, we see it with the war between the states here in the United States, Historians cringe when these topics come up because there's so much nuance, and the nuance really matters. The Inquisition was created to provide a court of experts so that sketchy theology could be investigated in a fair way. Now, they had a section on what to do with punishments and penal law, but it really was related to taking away a priest's authority to preach or to teach. In the most extreme cases, the priest or the teacher was to be handed over to secular authorities to be jailed. Well, over time, that evolved into the church authorities being in charge of the court part and the local police being in charge of everything else. Now, this was all over Europe, and so where the police were naturally more violent, the Inquisition was more violent. Where the preacher had shown disrespect to the local authorities, he might be shown disrespect overnight during his trial. Where a local community's law enforcement was familiar with heretical preaching, and then those same men watched that preacher lie to the court, those law enforcement may take the opportunity to, quote, convince the heretic to speak the truth. Over time, that risked becoming the norm, and in fact, certain members of the Inquisition and their staffs beside decided that they wanted to be a part of that encouragement as well. All along the way, the popes made a deliberate effort to limit these kinds of things. And while the caricature is the scene in Braveheart with the cardinal standing around ordering each strike, the reality was almost universally that the inquisitors sat in the courtroom and the secular authorities did the rest. That doesn't make it all that much better, but it's helpful to understand the detail. Pope Innocent's law, promulgated today in 1252, was one of many efforts to get things back on track and to reduce the amount of torture in an effort to find, quote-unquote, the truth. Also in papal documents today, in 1891, Pope Leo XIII published Rerum Novarum, in which he established the basis for modern Catholic social teaching. It was a document of its time and those economic conditions. Still, it's good reading, and its legacy goes far beyond words on paper. Those looking for a brief summary might think of it as something along the lines of a libertarian economic theory, along with a big-time support for unions and the rights of workers. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.